Hi, you're listening to Boggy Talk, Faith Conversations in the Mud, a resource of Church on Bayshore. Boggy Talk is recorded on Boggy Bayou in Niceville, Florida, and is hosted by Justin Wyatt and James Ross, pastors at Church on Bayshore. We typically want every matter of faith and life to have crystal clear answers, but it isn't always that easy. This podcast digs in to help Christians think with a kingdom mentality about topics that sometimes get muddy and bog us down. So let's dive in. Hey, and welcome to Boggy Talk. Thank you for joining us today as we continue in this series, Problems with Christians. Speaking of problems, <laughs> James, <laughs> how you doing, man? You could have said speaking of Christians, Christian. but you know, <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Doing all right, man. I'm good, man. How are you? I don't I think am, I asked you that last week. I am doing okay. You know, we have uh, recently just finished up um, as a family uh Flag football season, and so we kind of have a little break of our schedule, which is just so nice yeah. uh, to just yeah. have more time together and yeah. at home because it's just crazy with everyone uh, and homework. Homework in and of itself is crazy, but then add in you know sports, which are fun yeah. to be a part of. It's just nice to breathe a little bit. Yeah, I, it's actually a busy season right now for me. I'm actually at the Florida Baptist Convention right now. You on are Tuesday, November 9th. Yes. So how am I here and there? It's amazing. It you're preaching amazing. there and that's right. Yeah. You're on Boggy Talk. Yeah. It's the miracle of modern technology. It is. It is. You know what though? I'm glad because right today would probably be election day. I know. You just think and a year I ago it was like whew, it's man. It's not this year. I'm so glad it's not. I mean, you know, I there's there's still plenty for us to be divided <laughs> Yes. A nation. Oh, but but praise the Lord, it's not an election year. Uh, I mean, I some people are like, oh, it should be. I wish it was, you know, know, right, but right, you know right, what right. I mean? Like the drama of election year, yeah. I guess is what we should say. Yeah. Because uh, it's just, whew, last year was. We had oh, so much time on our hand because we were all yeah, like, everyone locked was, down more. And know? everyone I mean, was not so in Florida, mad. Right, everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not in yeah. Florida. Yeah. Everyone was so mad. When, uh, you know, politics is just always uh, interesting. And uh, that uh, actually is a perfect segue into what we're talking about today. And that is hypocrites. Oh, uh, ooh, nice. Ooh, nice little zing there. But, uh, you know, because that's what everyone assumes of politicians. Not all politicians are hypocrites, of nope, course. Nope. Not you, Mayor Hinkle. <laughs> no, no, not Or Mel Ponder. That's or right. Or Marcus Chambers. That's right. Please come back to Boggy Talk. That's right. Thank you for your yeah. service. And <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining us. But, you yeah. know, people just think that. So uh, what is the word hypocrite and what does it mean? Let's answer that question. <laughs> <I> like, <laughs> did you hear looking like, down? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you actually just talked about this yeah, uh, Sunday. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So it's fresh in your mind. Yeah. Uh, so when, when you hear the word hypocrite, people often think it's just someone who says one thing and does another, but it's yeah. a little more nuanced. Than that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's actually way more simple. The definition, you know, it's just somebody who is wearing a mask. It's mm -hmm. somebody who is an actor. They're right. playing a part. And so when Jesus is using that word, uh, he's saying, Hey, you are playing a part. Mm. You are not who yeah. you are portraying to be. Quit playing the part. So why yeah. do people say this about Christians? I think, you know, well, because one, they're playing a part <clears throat> and maybe because yeah. they're not genuine Christians. Yeah, uh, could be. Not always, uh, of course. Uh, what else, Justin? But I think also <laughs> reason number two in this seven part, uh, uh, I think part of it is because What's that the, was number one. Oh, number one. Okay. I thought you were giving okay. me a thumbs I'm waiting up. for number so, two now. Uh, number two would just be because they people are. Uh, did I just say that? I yeah, that, yeah was people are hypocrites. Like people, people I messed do, you up by giving I know, you the thumbs but up. People just do things. They they say one thing and they literally just <laughs> you do things. Well, they're not playing a part, but then they literally just say they say one thing and then literally do another thing. Right. And that is hypocritical. They're, they're immature. I mean, really. Yeah. 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 And 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 honestly, so like when Jesus is saying hypocrites, he's not talking about the immature. Right. You know, and he's not talking about the ones that like are just struggling to be who they're called to be. So, so, so immaturity needs to change. Right. And, you know, but that's, I think what most people are saying is like hypocrite. It's like, well, they're doing things because they're immature. They're not growing in that yet. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of times what people hone in on, but yeah. there's more to it. Right. Like my son isn't a hypocrite because, you know, he isn't at the level of, of whatever he wants to be yet, you know, but if he were saying he was, and then going out and doing something different, like that's a hypocrite. And so I, I, again, I, it, do, it doesn't mean immaturity shouldn't be addressed. It doesn't mean that when we struggle, we shouldn't try to get better, but there's a different level of 
evil if you want to use it when you talk about what a hypocrite really is, is what I would say. Yeah. So what we're saying is that, you know, someone sinning doesn't automatically make them hypocrite. No. Nope. Because I think that's what people assume. Well, you're yeah. a Christian. You shouldn't do that. Right. You shouldn't do, you shouldn't have done that because you're a Christian. So you're a hypocrite. You say. I'm a Christian because I keep not doing that. Like, <laughs> I know. I can't do it. Like I should never yell at my children. And I do. I Thank know. you, Jesus, for your grace. Right. If you, but if, what would make you a hypocrite is, is you're saying you shouldn't do this. And people who do this are terrible people. And then you so just, don't do And then you just don't, don't give and a, you don't care. Don't give a flip. Yeah, you're like, yeah. whatever, I'm going to do what I want. You know, like that is a dangerous, dangerous place to be. Uh, so sinning in and of itself doesn't make you a hypocrite. And what you just said reminds me of, you know, when Paul writes in, in Romans chapter seven, when he talks about, I do the things I don't want to do and I don't do the things I do want to do. Who's going to rescue me? Right. Jesus. That's like, right. Who's yeah. going to rescue me from this mm -hmm. body of death? Jesus. So it's, mm -hmm. that's, we are saying we, there are times when we're hypocrites, but sinning in and of itself isn't necessarily mm -hmm. making you a hypocrite. What makes you a hypocrite is playing the part, playing yeah, the part. And I think we like downplay it sometimes. Like I even hear Christians say, you know, we're all hypocrites. It's like, no, you know, like I think when you say that you're downplaying what a hypocrite is because to say like we all struggle with our commitments and we all are growing in grace, like that's one thing. But a hypocrite are people amongst our midst who are singing the songs we're singing, giving some of the money we're giving, you know, doing the things we're doing and really don't see their need for the grace of God. Mm hmm. I think, um, yeah, <laughs> I think I'm pulling this out of the vault from my college days, this one like theater class I took, but there was a method. How big was the vault that you had? Uh, in it's college a big days? vault. Did, did <laughs> the Christy vault let of you my keep mind. When you guys got married, <laughs> that's right. I had, to, I had to just pitch it okay. overseas. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, in the, in the oceans. Pitch mean, it like, overseas. overseas. <laughs> I'm so tired. Did I mention I'm tired? Yeah. Um, but there's a method actor, Russian method actor Stanislavski, and his whole method of acting and the way he instructed his students was to think like you basically want to take on the character mm, of the part you're mm, playing. And he used this analogy. Mm. He said, if you can imagine the skin of your character laying on the floor and you step into it mm -hmm. and you pull it over your head and you zip it up the back and you want to become that character. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, essentially his whole thing was you want to become one with the character. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what being a hypocrite. Yeah. And I think legitimately, like let's just say Sunday mornings, there are people it's like, I'm going to church, time to put my church face on uh, and there's no uh, resonance of faith or uh, repentance, uh, mm -hmm. affection for Jesus uh, outside of mm -hmm. that act on Sunday mm -hmm. morning. And so that really is, it's like, it's a basically putting on a mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. of self-righteousness. Right, I think yeah. that's a helpful way to, to envision it is like putting on this other skin, becoming someone else for other people. Yeah, uh, You know, and I think there's a level of this uh, in all of us that we can do. I think, um, I always joked about how like sometimes when you're out in public with your kids and you see another family out with kids, you you will see, and I've caught myself doing this, like things I wouldn't normally like get on to my kids about, but because other people around, I'm like, oh, oh, you shouldn't like we over parent in front of other people because mm -hmm. we are worried about, we're playing a part like, mm -hmm. and that's wrong. But I mm -hmm. think that's, that's a mild example, but the other other examples are practicing acts of righteousness mm -hmm. to be seen. Uh, that's exactly what uh, Jesus is confronting the Pharisees about uh, in, in in Mark and throughout the Gospels. They're mm -hmm. performing these perform literally performing yeah, these acts yeah, well, of a prayer of of right yeah, self righteousness. Yeah, yeah, they're prayer, out you know, tithing. Yeah, like they're doing the things to be seen, my men. That was Jesus's critique. Like you're not doing these things out of a genuine heart for God. You're doing these things to be seen by men, and and they begin to be the the kind of code they they dictate the cot the kind of gu uh, guide for how our faith is expressed when we're doing it to be seen by men. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think a struggle here, and specifically as leaders, you know, is that is that balance of like we are aware that people are watching, yeah, and we want to be an example. Um, you know, but but I, I I think and this it's nuanced, and that's this is why you really need accountability. Is it's got to come down to like 
where is your heart and what is your motivation for this? Um, I'm actually talking about this a little bit today at the Florida Baptist Convention, perhaps as you're listening to this. Yeah. So wow. ironically, wow. Yeah, you know. could be listening. You could be listening to James on Boggy Talk and listening to him at the convention at the same time. And I'm saying kind of, of the same thing. <laughs> but like, you know, th there's this popular podcast, Mar Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. And we, we talked about that, you know, a while ago. And, um, you know, like they began to just build this brand and build this image and this product. And I, I, I think I want to, I want to believe at one time the motivation was like, so that people would see who Jesus is, but, mm. it, but it became, we got to portray an image, right? We got to keep up a brand, all these things. And the only thing that really is going to help you to not go there is indeed having people who can ask you tough questions, you know, like why not just like, Hey, I saw, but like, Hey, Justin, you know, and, and I mean, we, maybe we need to be better about this. Like if I'm preaching or you're leading worship, like, Hey, you said this, mm -hmm. what'd you mean by that? Yeah. Or I noticed you were kind of whatever, like, yeah. are mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you sit, you focused on Jesus. Like I, I, we need to be able to ask each other those questions, you know, so to keep our hearts from becoming fixed. Yeah. It's so, thinks. I think I was thinking in terms of leadership, uh, and this is not just as a pastor, but it is, as, I think especially as a pastor, but any kind of leadership, spiritual leadership, uh, whether it's, you know, leading a life group or teaching, uh, where you are in front of people uh, yeah. and your life uh, is somewhat on display, it can be easy to play a part, yeah. you know, like to have this form. Like, I know this is what a leader should look like, you know, right, as a, you know, right, yeah, as yeah. a pastor, it's yeah. easy and to, that's healthy, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. It, you know, and, and that, that is a yeah, form of right. accountability, right. you know, like, Hey, I know that I, there's some standards, right. but uh, when we start, like if you, if we are constantly looking at if you're constantly watching other pastors yeah. and like that's working for them and that's working for them and that's working for them. And if I'm looking at other worse, that's working for them. There's, there's certainly wisdom to be learned. Yeah. But if I start acting like these other people and doing these things just right. so that I get the results that they seem to be getting, yeah. that's hypocritical. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm acting a part. I'm not yeah. being who God's called me to be, the leader he's called me to be, the, the person he's, who he's made me to be. And I'm not, ultimately I'm not trusting him right. to do the work that right. he wants to do. I'm trusting my, my performance. And I, right. I can perform the right way. If I could yeah. lead people the right way, if I could preach the right way right. or say things the right way, then and no, like the, God's got to do the work. And I think that is the, that's the same in any level of, of leadership that is somewhat public. You yeah. know, there's this, there's a desire to succeed. Yeah. There's a desire to be thought of well, um, but those things are not ultimate. Yeah. And I think we change the target, you know, we change the bullseye to something that's um, more measurable and more attainable and easier and makes us feel accomplished. And I think that that's probably one of the great problems with Amer American evangelicalism is that Christians begin to dictate success by these, these earthly standards and numbers start a conversation. They don't end a conversation. So like we're always tracking what is our attendance, how, how many people are in life groups, what does giving look like, how many people are getting baptized, but like, that's not our worth. And there will be years where that might not be as good because of COVID, because mm -hmm. of PCS season, because, Culture, yeah. because just for whatever reason that year, a bunch of people felt led to move and we, we, we evaluate those things. But I think we have to be so careful when we, we become driven by those things. And, you know, something that has just, dr has guided my parenting is character over behavior. So like, you know, behaviors matter. But ultimately, like character matters. Mm -hmm. And we've really, so my kids, like, you know, at first it was just us, like they would behave to get, <laughs> get a response from us, you mm -hmm. know, to make us happy, to get things from us. And now they're kind of to the age where they're kind of fleshing that out in public. And, you know, even one of my kids the other day, when they were mad at me, um, was like, well, you, you know. I'm going to tell somebody that you are who you say you are. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, fine. Like you say whatever you got to say. Like, in fact, I encourage you to find someone who you can talk to about your frustration with me. And they're like, oh. like, like I could tell it's good. They're wrestling through that, like mm -hmm. their image. And they're trying to like project on me that, well, I care about my image. I'm like, honestly, I care about our relationship mm -hmm. way more than that. Yeah. And so it's like, I think we have to, we really have to be like 
the same person with our kids everywhere we go as yeah. much as we can be mm-hmm. and help them understand why it's okay to talk one way as a family and maybe not have those same open conversations somewhere else. Like, but it's all going to point to character in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. And fixing behavior is just an easier target. Oh, it's, it's so much and easier. It's just easy. Like stop doing that right now. Cause you yeah. know, and rather than like, Hey, why are you doing this? Right. And it's the same with performative yeah. uh, action. It's like, it's easier to act a part yeah. than to be. Uh, and because it's, uh, there's something I can do to look this way rather than actually letting it flow from the inside, from the heart. Yeah. Um, so, Let's talk about really quickly, uh, we've hit on a little bit, but what are the, really the, the false motivations that lead people to become hypocrites? Yeah, I mean, pr- pride, uh, you know, I mean, and I think you talked about this last week, but, you know, just if you don't know who you are in Christ, mm. then you have the sin, this problem, and you need to find a way to feel justified. Yeah. So if our justification isn't from the cross, then we're going to figure out another way of being justified. Mm-hmm. And we either use religion to do that or we use, you know, some other standard. This is what interesting. Much of our conversation is hinging around religion. But actually, I would say what we see very clearly displayed in our society is that hypocrisy exists outside of Christianity. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and there's such a great hypocrisy with the moral sexual revolution right now. Um you know, there, there's such great hypocrisy in politics. There's just, mm-hmm. there's such hypocrisy that exists that people are convincing themselves they are good mm-hmm. when they know they're not. Yeah. That's I what think, I you know, when you say that, I think of, you know, people who advocate for, uh, care for life out you know, after birth, but don't care about life in the womb. Uh, right. And that, that, to me, that's a hypocrisy yeah. and vice versa for, yeah. you know, you know, the people who were anti against abortion, be pro-life, but not care as much for life. And, you know, that's, that's an example, you know, Christians get a you well, we just had, uh, uh, this week we're having a orphan Sunday coming up and, you know, like oftentimes Christians are accused of not caring of, yeah, we- uh, you know, we're going to talk about that a little bit, which we're doing way more. I mean, yeah, that that's that's the issue. You know, there's all, you know, remember the thing that was like whenever Christians were protesting Chick Fil A and they were lined up at Chick Fil A to eat, or no, people were protesting Chick Fil A, so all these Christians went to line up at Chick Fil A to eat there, and they're like, we wish that you know Christians would be as eager to go to soup kitchens, and I was like, but they, they, they are. are, they're like, like literally like almost every soup <laughs> kitchen is a church. Like, <laughs> yeah, what exactly. are you talking about? Like, yes, exactly. So we are doing better, but I think as believers, like. And this gets to it. Like our goal is not to say our demographic wins. Right. Our demographic is better. Our subculture is better. Our our, our goal is to say not – it's not the life I live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So like, you know, my life is a, is a, 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 a sacrifice to God, an act of worship, Romans 12, you know. So, so again, we just can't be motivated by those things. And we're so tempted to be like, we win. Mm-hmm. You know, in America specifically. Yeah. I think, you know, as we're talking about reasons why people are this way, I think another common thread is that people elevate a tradition above yeah, Jesus. Yeah. And so uh, we've seen this. I, I think this is a big thing right now, especially on social media. You can follow people and like, there's all these stories of deconstruction of faith. And mm-hmm. uh, we talked a little bit about that uh, in months prior about deconstruction, how deconstructing things isn't necessarily bad. But what we, what we we see a lot right now are people who've grown up in church, uh, who've been around faith, and they uh, are then like feel like they get to this point in their life where they feel like they're just faking it. Like they've they've conformed to all these rules and patterns. Whether it's uh, you know in media, we don't watch this, we do this, we read these books, we yeah. dress a certain way, we listen to certain kinds of music. You know, the, there's a lot of deconstruction of the purity culture of yeah. the '90s, mm-hmm. and you come to, and then so people are saying, well. I don't want to play this part anymore. Mm-hmm. And so they're deconstructing and then walking away from the faith. And and here's what I would say to that. Like we should deconstruct ways that we are hypocritical. Mm-hmm. Like, and we should find out. We should investigate our own hearts, ask the Holy Spirit to search. But the answer isn't, well, I got it all wrong, so I'm walking away. Yeah. The answer is I got it wrong and I'm walking to Jesus. And mm-hmm. he's going to rebuild something, uh, a faith that is pure and better in me because he's 
it's his mercy and his grace to us. And I think that is rooted so much in this hip, this feeling of hypocrite. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. I want to be true to myself. Mm-hmm. And and the true to myself feels like that was hypocritical. So I'm just gonna throw throw it all out and walk away. Yeah. So you 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 quoted last week the the bridge thing. It was mm-hmm. really good. It impacted me so much. I memorized it. What was it again? <laughs> you got it tattooed, right? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. have to build relational bridges strong enough to bear the weight of the truth we have to say. Uh, so like when it comes to sharing the gospel, you know, outside with people who don't trust Jesus, like that's why. But I would say also like if we're deconstructing, so say we've grown up a Southern Baptist or been in the Southern Baptist life and we see issues that exist in our Southern Baptist church, the same principle applies. Mm-hmm. And I think so many people who are, you know, younger see see some of the flaws that exist yeah. in any organization. It, there's uh, there's every, good and there's every bad. Every single organization. And instead of like celebrating what has been good and being with those people and helping them see how they've erred, they're just leaving and they're on the outside just shooting at them. And so now you don't have this this bridge that can support the 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 criticism. And so like, you know, I came into this church and Things needed to change. I, I mean, I think comparatively, our church was great, healthy. I think that's part of why we've had, you know, the the results that we've had, the fruit we've had. But like, I recognize some of those things are going to take time, you know, because people need to, my prayer has been help people to see that my eyes are on Jesus. And then if God is, that I'm trying to lead them to, and, and to help me in that. Mm-hmm. And I just think so much of deconstruction, specifically you know, millennials, we want to start our own thing, you know, and, uh, but it isn't new because generation X did that. Thing, yeah. Did yeah. That yeah. Too, it's true. You know, like yeah. every- and, 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 and honestly, a lot of that. So great point. I mean, a lot of what Gen X did is insufficient because they did what we're talking about mm-hmm. in a rebellious spirit yeah. versus a with you spirit. Now I get, and I think a lot of Gen X just kind of quit. Yeah. And whereas millennials like, we're going to build our own. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. We're yeah. going to start Facebook or verge or whatever they're called <laughs> now. And so like, yeah, I mean, change really comes from within often. Mm-hmm. I understand that that takes patience. And I understand that there's still a need to start new work. There's still, but like if, if we're only starting new things and we're not replacing the way we should, then then we're in trouble as, mm-hmm. as a society, as a church, whatever it might be, you know? And, and I, th- I think, I think like, you know, Jesus, one of his critiques to the Pharisees is he's like, you're, you're evangelizing, but you're, you're making, twice the sons of hell as you are mm-hmm. when you convert people. And I think like we really need to be thinking like, if my goal is to spread whatever it is I'm spreading, what am I reproducing? Mm-hmm. And uh, like a couple of weeks ago, I said like, it's not, it can't be reactionary. It's not right. counter narrative. It's meta narrative of mm-hmm. the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I think that gives us a broader picture into what it really looks like to, to not be a hypocrite, but also not be a hypocrite in our approach to what we think is hypocrisy. <laughs> Say that again and unpack. To, Don't to be not hypocrite. be a hypocrite. Okay, so yes. so then we have problems with hypocrites, mm-hmm. right? But we can't be hypocritical in how we treat right hypocrites. Like, yes, we need to. They point need the them same the, grace yeah, that we right, need. Yes, yeah. exactly. They, it takes the same relational investing, and 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 I think we got to trust God. You know, mm-hmm. I think we got to trust God. Um, and, you know, America is just a challenging context, you know, to, yeah. to do all this. So, yeah, it is. Yeah. I think, you know, evaluating like preventative steps to not being a hypocrite, like ask God to search your heart. Yep. Holy Spirit, search your heart. Like just convict us and God, challenge us. That's right. Yeah. Sinner, yeah. Right. Like that's yeah. what Jesus says. You know, like that. I, um, yeah, I think the Pharisees, like they just, uh, they weren't searching their own hearts. It's funny. I was going back. Uh, the hypocrites I always think about when I was in seminary in one of the classes, I was in one of the worship classes I was in, they, uh, our professor, she wanted us to write songs based on scripture. And there was a guy in there who was like, he was not a musician, but he was taken as an elective because he needed to graduate on time. And he was funny. And he's like, I don't know a lick of music at all. And she's like, tell me to write a song. So he took the tune of joy to the world. And she was like, I want you to use scripture. And so he used this passage, like woe to the scribes. Oh, it was wow. like, so it was like, woe, woe to, to you scribes, scribes and Pharisees. You are, but wash, whitewashed. Wow. I mean, it stuck with me. It was, he 
got an A because he deserved it. You should it. lead us in that. Uh, we should sing Christmas that. Christmas is coming up. <laughs> the Christmas is coming. <laughs> Let's do it. I mean, it was literally like, you're going to die, repent. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. um, he added some, you know, added some text. Yeah. But do I we think, have to do CCLI if we do CCLI, that? We can, we, I'll ask him. I'll, okay. uh, I'll, we'll, okay. I'll, I'll call up. His name's Justin. Yeah. I will uh, call him up and say, hey. Is man. it you? No, it's not me. Oh, it's Justin. His name's Justin. His name is Justin. Okay. Justin Richards, if you're listening, buddy. Um, he's not. He's not. He's busy pastoring. Yeah, yeah. Um, up in uh, Georgia. But I think uh, I read this and think, wait, how do we prevent ourselves from becoming hypocrites? We ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. And then we we repent and we don't walk away. We don't just drop him like, well, I'm just going to quit. Like we go to Jesus. Uh, how would you, like, let's say you see uh, someone being hypocritical, like a, a a believer. Yeah. How do you bring that up? How yeah. do you talk through that? Yeah. I mean, again, relationship is going to give you so much leverage. You know, something I say that's very important in uh, parenting, discipleship, whatever it may be, is intentionality with proximity. So mm. if we're intentional people, but we don't have proximity to people, then they're going to hear what we say is harsh. If we have proximity to people, but we're not intentional with them, then we're going to just let them fall, die, whatever mm. it might be. But if we have proximity and we're intentional, then we have such great opportunity to to do the bridge thing you're talking about. So um <laughs> the bridge thing. Yeah. I, I Matthew 18, I mean, I just think you go to them, Jesus says, in private, and you just say, Hey, the other day you said this, or I've noticed, I love you. Like what's up? Mm -hmm. And give them the opportunity that maybe you're confused. Like that's what you approach it. Like Truly, like, usually when I'm right, I'm right. But, like, I'll often come and be like, okay, God, like, I'm going to bring this up to Justin. But if I'm just, like, off base here, like, mm -hmm. just show me. And, yeah. and, and I want to listen. Like, mm -hmm. um, I just think the Lord uses that. Yeah, he does. Because a real hypocrite is not saved. Mm -hmm. So, like, they're going to resist it or respond to the gospel. Mm -hmm. But a believer is going to respond because they're not playing a part. Right. And you've just told them a way they're struggling because yeah. it's not fake. You know, like if right. you if you told a character, a guy who's a character actor, like, hey, you're not being yourself. They're like, yeah, well, because I'm not trying to be myself. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, they, you know, they're playing a part. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. So, you know, so if you tell a person who's a hypocrite, like, hey, you say you love Jesus, but then you you talk bad about black people, you yeah. know, or you talk bad about white people or you, you know, just say mean things. Yeah, like, you're looking at people. They don't care. Yeah. Because exactly. they're playing a part, like, you know, yeah. like, mm -hmm. like, okay. Oh, yeah. But yeah, there may be that initial sting of like, what? what? But but so, someone who loves the Lord is going to eventually like that's got to sink in. You yeah. know, we, yeah. you know, our, our calloused hearts may, it may take a moment. It may take a while, but. Holy Spirit's going to penetrate our yeah, hearts. Yeah, you yeah know? the gospel is like a seed planted, and so right. if there's concrete in that heart, it's going to burst forth, you know, yeah. with fruit. Mm -hmm. So, so the question is just: Does the seed, does the gospel take root in their lives? You know, yeah, and I, you know, I, I just think that we often underestimate people. Mm. We think like, oh. I've listened to the Lord and he's changed my heart. He's melted his heart of stone. But like, why is he not going to do that yeah. in them? And ultimately that's doubting God. Yeah. Because you know? he has the ability. He's able to do measurably more than all we ask or imagine. Yeah. So that's what I would deal with, you know, and I, I it's just going to exist. You know, Jesus mm -hmm. was pretty harsh. That's why I'm like, I'm not Jesus because people as a pastor, it's interesting because people will part of playing the part is making, this is just so weird. And, and mm. if this, there are people who want me to think they're following Jesus because then if the pastor thinks they're following Jesus, they're good. Okay. And I'm just going to be honest with you. When you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, it doesn't matter what the heck James Ross thought or <laughs> Justin Wyatt thought or yeah. whoever it was like, it matters what God sees in your heart. And so mm -hmm. like only God can judge me or only God sees like, like that's comforting. But then that's tremendously terrifying if you're not sincere in your faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he that, will, it will all be come to light, right? And that kind of brings it back full circle because when we talk about being hypocrite, we, we're not talking about someone who's sincere in their faith who messes up. You know, we're talking about people who are just 
want to be perceived as being sincere in their yes. faith. And that's convicting for all of us. I mean, I think all of us, as we talk about this, there should be some measure of like, okay, God, search my heart and yeah. reveal any any way that I'm yeah. doing this in my own life where, you know, because I don't, we don't want to be this. We don't want to fall into this. And for, for non-believers looking at Christians and saying, well, you're hypocrites, I think, um, Maybe you're right. <laughs> maybe yeah. some, yeah, maybe, maybe so. Maybe they aren't believers. Maybe they are. Uh, but, you know, the goal in all this is that we pursue, as Christians, we're pursuing Jesus. Yeah. And he's the one who makes us new. And and truthfully, like, if you're a Christian, um, you know, and, and someone who says is not a Christian accuses you of being a hypocrite, at, like ask yourself why and ask them like what why are you saying this like because yeah. i think it gets thrown out there pretty generally like christians are just a bunch of hypocrites yeah, it's usually yeah. not specifically like usually people are gonna see it but mm -hmm. you know like take it to heart and mm -hmm. ask yourself yeah, hey yeah. is there any truth in this and maybe maybe what wins a hearing with them is you saying you know what you're right you know i, yeah. I had a neighbor who was um uh and when we lived in Crestview, who wasn't a believer, and he had come to uh, church with his wife a few times and had gone to a life group. And, um, you know, there was some conversation that happened in that group that wasn't, it wasn't, it just was off color. It was, you know, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to say that like I'm trying to minimize it, but he's the one who called it out. And, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, okay, like, <laughs> that's hard because, you know, then I'm trying to explain like, yeah, it's, it's going to happen. Like, mm -hmm. and, but for him, he was looking for reasons. Mm -hmm. Like he, he was oh, also yeah. looking for reasons mm -hmm. to like, it wasn't, a, I would say from him, it wasn't necessarily coming from a sincere place either. He was kind of looking for reasons to justify how he already felt. Um, yeah. And but, people are, yeah. And yeah, that's, yeah. You I can't mean, do anything about that. Like other than explain like, Hey, that's, that happened and I'm sorry. And that's not the heart of God. Yeah. And that's, I mean, we just, grace of God, grace of God, mm. grace of God. Something I, I've, I've said, I've shared this illustration before. It's probably like my, one of my favorite, you know, little stories that God's given me, but I was riding back from uh, something. I was on, listening on the radio and this pastor was talking about, you know, the, the steroid controversy in baseball. And he was talking about how if they let all these guys who took steroids in the Hall of Fame, then they're going to have an asterisk by their name in the Hall of Fame. And then he was talking about how a bunch of Christians, you know, live their lives. They're not pursuing God the way they should. They're not in church the way they should. And he's like, you're all going to have an asterisk by your name. <laughs> go. And then I was just like, yeah. The asterisk is Jesus. Right. Like we're all in. None of us are making it there Jesus. because we did right. something yeah. right. Like yeah. none of us deserve to be there. Yeah. And so I just think like – this is what, what I think, yeah. like when that flows out, mm -hmm. when that flows out, that's what's powerful. Right. And that, and, and so listen, one of the challenges of the church, and I, and I would say of our church, like, so we used to have the altar call, right? And we don't really do that anymore. And, you know, people ask why not? And I'm like, well, people weren't really coming down to get saved and, oh, well, why not? And I'm telling you, here's why in our church, most people view, viewed, maybe still, the response time as an opportunity for non-believers to respond to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And even if you ask people who responds to the gospel, a non-believer, no, believers respond to the yeah, gospel the every time. day. Mm -hmm. And so if we really want to have a response time, it's not just for the non-believer, mm -hmm. it's for everyone Everybody. to say, here's who Jesus is, and I just, I bow before him, and I acknowledge the ways of my life. Right. Yeah, that That's what should characterize us, mm -hmm. not what's yeah. every day. That's a good point uh, to close on too. Because I think that's the that's the answer. It's like how do we become non hypocritical? Is that we pursue Jesus? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Know? Like we we fall down before Him. We are humble. We uh, you know recognize that we desperately need Him. We can't do anything apart from His work and His yeah. power and His grace working in us and through us. And um, Christianity is a response. It yeah. is not a religion. It is a response. Yeah, it is a. I've heard it said. It's a constant recycling of the of the pattern of repent and believe and yeah, repent right. and believe and repent and believe and repentance will lead you to more belief and belief will lead you to more repentance. Amen. And it, Amen. It, it just keeps going. So, uh, man, well, I hope this conversation has uh, been helpful, maybe brought some clarity, maybe raised some questions. So feel free to reach out yeah. to us, send yeah. us any questions you've got. Or uh, next week we are continuing uh, in this problems with Christians and uh, with uh, the issue of being a little sheltered, maybe uh, out of touch. You know, what's interesting is do those people even actually watch 
the computer? Maybe they're too. Do they too get on wild. the line? Do they, do they, do get, they on get on the, on the YouTube? Do they yeah. get on? Yeah. So, so maybe we're just like, you know, speaking yeah, and, to the choir well, here. Well, and then, and maybe it can be somebody's mission then to take that message to someone Ooh, and say, who sheltered, sheltered. Yeah. So, yeah. hey, thanks for joining <laughs> us. We hope you will not be sheltered and <laughs> join us next time. Thanks for listening to Boggy Talk. We are so glad you joined in the conversation. Go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss a beat. 